Hello lovelies, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant and welcome back to The Other Side of the Dash. Today I want to give an update on my braces. Uh, I got braces, it will be two years in May and I'm going to tell you that I am sick of these braces. I was originally told that I would have these braces for 15 months and 15 months would have been what, around December? Would have been December? So May, June, July, August, September, September. So that actually, I'm sorry you guys, that actually would have been around September. Here we are in January. Now, for those of you who don't know my braces journey, I originally went in because I wanted my gap. I had a huge gap and if I can find a before picture, I'll put it here. I had a huge gap that all I wanted was my gap closed. I was okay with the rest of my teeth. I just wanted the gap closed. And previously when I lived in North Texas, I had my gap closed by just having some porcelain put on my two front teeth here and it kind of closed. It wasn't closed completely, but it was satisfactory that I just didn't have this big gap. Um, throughout my life, I've, I've had the gap uh, for as far as I can remember. I didn't always have it, but the, the the larger gap I've had for as large as I can remember. And I've always been told that I always looked mean because I never wanted to smile because I was just so uh, conscious of that gap. And I just did, I, I felt like I looked like a little chipmunk with that gap because you guys can see I have the little chub, you know, the chubby cheeks here. And with that gap, I just didn't look right to me you know i was always told you look cute you know as an adult you don't want to be told that you look cute so um i never smiled much uh and so i just wanted that clothes and like i said i it was successful when i lived in north texas however one day when i was biting into some food it broke off and the dentist or the person who uh, had done that for me before was no longer available so uh, flash forward here, I'm, uh, I'm remarried here in, North, in uh, North Carolina and I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna get braces because I went in to my regular dentist and they referred me to an orthodontist who I trusted their word because I trusted the dentist um, uh, to uh, refer me to the appropriate person. Uh, I thought I did my research. Um, I do strongly suggest you do your research, but I'm living proof that even doing your research is not always you know the bet you'll get the best you know person for the job and so uh i went in still not wanting braces i wanted just this gap fix so i'm hoping they can just put porcelain on it again well after the consultation of course what 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 we have to do braces on your full mouth well okay I really want this gap closed. At this, this point, I'm in my late 40s, about to hit 50. I really want to make a good impression on the other side of my dash. So I went ahead and went for it. And the insurance paid for most of it, but I still came out of the pocket a pretty good penny of it for it, you know, for it. So I asked a lot of the questions up front. And I thought I was getting answers until I realized as I asked these same questions going on throughout the process, I started getting a lot of hot smoke, a lot of hot air and smoke. And so getting towards the 15 month mark, I'm being told, well, no, we might have to do this. We might have to do that. Well, okay. So when is this going to take place? Well, we'll have to see this. We'll have to see that. And each week is each, I'm sorry, it's each month because I was getting my uh, braces uh, tightened every month. It was the same old thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm not seeing any results. And I'm going to tell you guys, this gap, it's kind of closed now as you guys can see there. It stayed open. It stayed the same for the first 15 months. I will kid you not. It stayed open. And I'm finally like, I'm like, okay, at some point, now I can see the rest of my teeth shifting. But this gap did not close for the first 15 months. And I started to get upset because I'm like, okay, I had no problem with the rest of my teeth. I only had a problem with the gap here. So I finally said, okay, something's got to give. You guys are getting my insurance money and you're getting my month money every month. Why is my gap not closing? Now, if you guys can see here, I do have that little piece of meat there. In between there. I should have had a pointer. Do I have a pointer? I'm going to use an ink pen. 
you guys can see right there. I had a little piece of meat there that I've, that I've had for a long, long time. And that's part of the reason why the gap is staying open. But, however, after I really, really put the pressure on them about this being my original problem, they finally put a double train on the top and start closing it. And instantly, I start seeing that gap close. So they couldn't even use that piece of meat in the middle as a response or as an excuse. So after I start seeing that close up, my concern then started to be that piece of meat there. And I asked the question, okay, so my concern is, since the gap is closing and that meat is there, uh, will that piece of meat eventually move my teeth back? And of course the concern was yes. I mean, common sense will tell you, of course. So what are we gonna do with this piece of meat? Are you guys going to remove it? Oh yes, we're going to remove that piece of meat. Okay, so at what point are you gonna remove that piece of meat? Oh, we've got a ways to go. We've got a ways to go. Okay, so my teeth have been at this closure for a while now. Okay, but if the meat is there and it can't go any further, when are you guys going to operate and close the meat? Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I've been told this month after month after month. So finally, last month, after I uh, had to turn down a speaking engagement, because you guys can see it impairs your speech. Braces are not the funnest things, especially if you're an adult, especially if you're a professional speaker like I am. Um, you talk, food flies out of your mouth because you think you've brushed your teeth and you've got all the food. Uh, you stumble over your tongue. The braces kind of rub against the top of your lips. You can't talk correctly. You stumble over your words. So you just, it's just, they're just not ideal for public speakers. So I had to turn down some speaking engagements. So after being fed up, I finally said, look, when are you guys going to get rid of this so that my front two teeth can completely close so I can completely get rid of this braces, these braces, they're ruining my life. It will be two years in May. So finally, the truth comes out. Now you gotta know there's always a a, uh, what's the term? Uh, 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 the other shoe will drop in, in, in the medical field, whether it's dentistry or just re regular medical. Um, we came back to this thing. Well, they're going to have to, to operate and take that out. Well, I already knew that. But I had been asking them, was that considered part of the procedure that was covered under the insurance and the payments that I was already making? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So come this day, I'm being told, no, it's a separate procedure, which is going to cost you thousands of dollars out of pocket. What? I don't think so. I've been asking you since day one to the point that I've gotten on your nerves because I continuously ask you questions. So now this is no longer an option. Okay, so what are we going to keep doing? You're going to keep building insurance. You're going to keep charging me my monthly fee to just keep tightening this only to have the pink piece of meat, open it back up. You tighten it, open it. How long are we going to play this cat and mouse game? So they gave me a second option. They can make me some permanent retainers and put a bar behind the top two teeth. So I thought about that option and I settled for that option. And I thought to myself, okay, there are some questions to be asked here. And I asked, okay, so what is the downside of this option? So I was told that it's possible for the permanent retainers to break. And once the permanent retainers break, you have to come in here and go through this all over again. So I'm like, okay, how much is it? Here we go again with this cat and mouse game. Well, if the insurance covers it, it's gonna be $96. Oh, okay, I can deal with that. I can pay $96, but nine times out of 10, the insurance is going to deem it as cosmetic work and they're not going to cover it. So you're going to have to pay $500 to get it done. So I'm not very happy to say the least. So short, short, long story short to sum it all up. Um, I'm not happy with my braces experience. Um, if I think about it now, I would have, have come more to terms with my gap and save the money that I spent 
and bought myself that really expensive Nikon camera that I wanted. That's what it boils down to. Um, because it has ruined my life. Uh, it hasn't ruined my life. Let me, let me go back a little bit. It has limited my life in the last May is in what? February, March, April, May in four months. In the last uh, 18 months on what I can do as far as taking speaking engagements, as far as the pain and uh, just the, uh, the, un the uncomfortability, just things that, um, that I was not able to do that I normally am able to do. Uh, and it has, uh, t you know, my wallet has taken a hit. And um, if I had to do it all over again, I think I would not I would not have done it uh, and you know and not to mention uh, I'm raising my granddaughter and I'm almost pretty sure she's gonna need braces so we'll have to go through the whole entire thing again with her but I think it'll be a little bit different than her because we'll be you know we will have lo relocated and I will again thoroughly um, done research this time I will get more references and plus, she'll be getting it at a younger age. I am an adult trying to get adult braces. So I think the experiences are a little bit different. Uh, but again, uh, had I had, have, have I had to do the experience all over again, I wouldn't do it. Um, so um, I would have tried something else. I don't know. Um, but the thing about it is I, I, I had another option, an uh, option that I had before that they say was not available to me, which I find kind of odd. Um, but then again, I don't find odd because there was the big green um, involved in it. But um, I don't want you to let my experience deter you from getting braces. I just want you to be very, very sure it's what you want to do. Make sure you uh, do your research. Make sure you talk to your orthodontist. Um, so you guys are on the same page from day one and each time going forward. Make sure you get some references so you'll know uh, what others have experiences and not just you know maybe uh if i had gone and talked to adults who had got braces and not just children that would have been a a, a deciding factory factor as well um just you know and i've seen you know other people who didn't even use my orthodontist who've used people elsewhere i've seen testimonies of who who worked and who didn't work so i mean it's crapshoot basically um and I'm sorry to say that, but it just basically is. And um, I guess it's, it's just, it just depends on how far you want your vanity. I mean, if I had thousands of dollars, I would have just got myself a whole new bridge. But I'm not that. But even if I was had thousands of dollars, I'm just not that vain to the point that I would pay a lot of money to get my whole mouth redone. When all I really wanted to do was just get a little gap closed up. That was all I wanted to do. I didn't. The rest of my teeth were, to me, were fine. I just didn't. I wanted to be able to smile. People say I have a nice smile when I smile, but I was so uh, uh, conscious about my smile because of that gap. And that was the only thing that I wanted to correct. So I really wish that I had started my braces journey with you guys from the very beginning. I do have a couple of videos where I do do some brace updates and I will do brace updates from this time forward until they actually uh, are removed so you can do some post uh, brace uh, videos so you guys can see how it is after um, one thing I don't like about my braces is um, I'll I have other vlogging channels and the links are in the description box below um, and I'll watch myself as I'm recording myself or even I'll catch myself when I'm working or talking to someone and I have this frown on my face it's just sometimes if you notice older people who have dentures or they don't have their teeth in their mouth at all and their mouth just kind of tries to compensate for something, I find myself doing that and it's not a very attractive look at all. And you guys, I'm almost 50 and fabulous. I don't need anything bringing me down, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's my update for January on my braces. Again, um, if I had to do it all over again, wouldn't do it. Um, but um, again, research, talk to your doctor every step of the way, call your insurance, make sure you know what's what's uh, what's covered, what's not covered um, before you start putting out that money because uh, if you don't, there will be some surprises towards the end like there was with me. So um, 
they were telling me, well, let's go ahead and get you to pay this $500 because the insurance company is not going to pay it. Well, no, we're going to file this claim and let the insurance company tell me they're not going to pay it before I give you my $500, you know. So, um, the insurance company very well may come back and say we're not going to pay it, but I'm going to let them tell me first before I let the, the orthodontist pressure me into telling me to pay this $500. Because if I pay you my $500 and the insurance company comes back to tell me they only got, that I only have to pay the $98, are you going to re reimburse me my money? Or am I have to go through a whole bunch of hoopla to get my $400 back? So at any rate, um, just little things um, on the braces. Um, again, they have a double train on the top. That's how they were able to close my top gap so fast. Why they couldn't do that in the beginning just really irked and irritated me. I tell you guys, like I said, for the first 15 months, my gap was not closed. It would not close because they were not trying to make an effort to make it close. Because it wasn't beneficial to them, in my opinion, monetarily. Now, others may agree with me, especially some dentists that are orthodontists that are watching this. I don't care what you say. There is no way, all this 15 months, you could not close it, but you put a double train on it, and then a month or two, my gap is closed up. I'm sorry. After I complain and ag. So, um, I think this could have done, been done in 15 months, like that was originally promised. Um, but, you know, I digress on the complaining part because I, I agree and I believe that you never get anywhere complaining, but I have made my concerns known. Uh, but for those who are looking to get adult braces, uh, just be aware of some things. Um, after the first few days of getting your braces tightened, um, at least in my case, I was not able to eat any solid foods. I ate soup most of the time because your mouth is going to be so sore. Um, you're going to be doing liquids. Um, you will get a choice of these bands. And I mostly keep the pink bands in my um, mouth, as you can see there. I just think they, they complement my lips and my gums and my teeth. Um, every now and then I would put silver in it. And if it was a holiday, I might put red and green for Christmas. Occasionally, I used a purple or blue, but mostly I kept the pink just because I thought they, again, complimented my mouth. Um, uh, it'll be a challenge to floss your teeth, but they do give you these things called flossers that you put the floss in and, and it lets you thread the floss through your, um, your braces. But it's unlike where you have your regular floss. You can floss, take out floss. You got to thread each tooth. To floss it you know uh, so it's a little time consuming but it is recommended that you do do floss your teeth uh, at least once twice a day because that food especially with the braces I don't know what it is about braces but that food gets cut up in there and you think after you because we I use electric, electric toothbrush and I do recommend an electric toothbrush if you have braces but when you think that electric toothbrush has gotten that food out of your teeth you better think again because it does not get all that food out. So use an electric toothbrush, which brings me to my, my, my next thought is get a water pick. A water pick will help get the rest of that food out. Um, plus, actually, they say it's better than flossing. Um, but I'm sorry, I, I just, my opinion, I don't think anything takes the place of flossing. But I do the flossing and I do the water pick to get that food out. Um, there's nothing like... Uh, the other day I did a video for one of my other channels and I was talking and I just realized I had a big old piece of spinach right there <laughs> on the front and I had brushed my teeth. So, uh, not the coolest or, or the, uh, sexiest thing to be talking to someone and you got spinach in your mouth. Uh, but, um, so invest in an electric toothbrush. Um, and I will put in the description box below the kind that I use. Also invest in a, uh, water floss. I will also put in the description box below the kind that I use. And also, there are these things called um, dental picks. They are these things. They're from the make, uh, makers of the, the brand is Gum. If you guys can see that there. Let's see if I can. That usually always works for everything, right? But anyway, they're these, uh, these are the thin ones. It depends on your teeth. I don't like the real thin ones. Unless you're trying to get it between your teeth, you know, the, the, the teeth. But if you're trying to get it between your braces, I would use the fatter ones. And they're these ones here. See how the, the bristles, let me show you here. 
see the difference between the bristles see one's thick and one is thin hope you guys can see that i can't tell if you guys can see that but they're both uh by gum and i'll put the link in the description box below another thing that you guys are going to need like religion is going to be gum wax Sometimes your braces will rub up against the sides of your mouth and it hurts like I don't know what. So they have this wax, comes in strips, you tear it apart and you can you tear a strip off and you can tear little pieces off and it, it uh, I'm sorry you guys, the sun is moving over here, I'm in front of my window. Um, you can tear it, you can finagle it. And you just wrap it around that part, that metal part in your mouth. And it will uh, soothe your um, your uh, gum. And I'm going to tell you this is a lifesaver because I found out that if I had to go in in between my, uh, my orthodontist visits and have my uh, braces adjusted, there is a charge for that. So, in order to avoid a charge, I take that uh, that wax and put over the braces until my next visit. Um, and it worked pretty well. Um, and another thing that you might want to invest in is one of those things that, um, you know, for those people who grind their teeth, you will find yourself grinding your teeth. Um, a lot of people say they do it at night. I didn't find myself grinding my teeth at night. I found it myself doing it during the daytime. Uh, let's say if I'm in my computer doing a little work, I'm sitting there and I just find myself grinding my teeth. So um, get yourself one of those um, plastic cups and I'll put a, a link in the description box below so you're not grinding your teeth. So those are some of the major things that you're going to need to get if you're going to um, actually get and consi consider and get uh, adult braces. Uh, but I think that's enough for you for now to kind of digest. But uh, mostly important, again, do your research, talk to the orthodontist, talk to their references, and talk to your insurance company uh, because ultimately it's going to come down to, uh, depending on your budget, what the insurance company is and is, not, is and is not going to pay for and what's going to come out of your pocket. So, and make sure you're clear on what's going to come out of your pocket. Um, I made it known to um, my doctor or my orthodontist that since the original date i've never gotten a piece of paper you know i had suspicion that i felt they were overcharging me and uh, a lot of defense came up when i asked about that i want something in writing um that's another red flag if they don't want to give you anything in writing there's a problem so uh, what i did was i find a, i filed a dispute with my insurance company to find out exactly how much they were covering, what the charges were, what they were being billed for, because I used to work for an in, for a medical company, uh, medical practice, and I happen to know they double charge the patient to the insurance company for certain procedures, and the insurance company sometimes they catch it, sometimes they didn't, and they pay these medical practices for these charges that were bogus. So. Um, you got to be really, really on top of this, guys, especially in this day and age. So um, that's my take on and my update on adult braces for the month of January. And next month, I will be in their office where they're supposed to be. Excuse me. See how you talk and you'll be. Look, <laughs> make sure you are uh, far away from somebody when you're talking because that saliva can be flinging everywhere. But make sure uh, you tune in next month for my braces update because they're supposed to be taking them out. They're supposed to be doing a, a permanent retainer and putting a metal bar behind my front two teeth. They're doing this all in one day. So I'm going to be sitting in their office from 8 to 5 to get this done. So you guys wish me luck because I will be very, uh, very vocally voicing some of my opinion, getting some things in writing. And letting some things be known so hopefully everything goes smoothly uh if you don't get a video after my appointment you know things did not go very well <laughs> so i'm sure they will so again i'm glad you tuned in if this is your first time here please please take a moment to give my video a thumbs up 
take time to subscribe hit that subscribe button and share this with all your family and friends and hit the notification button so you won't miss a video and look in the description box below for anything talked about uh, in this video any links and also the links to my other channel channels uh, websites and vlogs so I will talk to you guys next time folks I'm Yolanda and this is the other side of the dash see you folks <laughs>